There's only one road into Key West, but you won't believe where it can take you. Travel back in time to a city rich with history. Discover amazing artists and musicians. Taste seafood fresh off the boat. Or just kick back and soak up the island vibe. For more about Key West, visit flakeys.com. Key West, close to perfect, far from normal. Coming to Curiosity Stream, go on an adventure 66 million years in the making with Dino Week. From new discoveries about the dinosaurs we thought we knew, to the mind blowing species still being unearthed, and the controversial discovery that could rewrite history. Did dinosaurs survive longer than imagined? Dino Week on Curiosity Stream. And with monthly, annual, and bundled pricing plans, find the one that works for you at CuriosityStream.com. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past, from the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver, the lone ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Hurry, big fellow! I'm Silver! Jeff Morris, operator of the Wagon Wheel Rancho, rose from his comfortable chair before the fireplace to answer a knock at the door. Why, well, evening, stranger. What can I... Huh? Well, my... <laughs> Hello, Jeff. For the love of Mike, it's the masked man and Tonto. Come in, come in. <laughs> oh, we just oh. stopped by for a moment, Jeff. Oh, but you got to stop in for a visit. Oh, I uh, noticed you had company. They might not understand the reason for this mask I'm wearing. Oh, nonsense. And besides, it ain't company. It's just my daughter Janie and her beau, young Jack Page. Now you come inside and get warm. Got a big roaring fire going. Come in, you hear me? Oh, thanks. It was evening. In the big living room of the ranch house, the masked man sat comfortably before the open fireplace, listening to the words of the old ranchman. Also enjoying the warmth of the open hearth were Jeff Morris's daughter, Janie, and Jack Page, who served as foreman for Mr. Morris. The stolid Indian Tonto sat silently, staring at the quick-leaping flames. Well, all in all, it's been a mighty good year for us, mighty good. How much stock would you be wintering, Jeff? 
Well, can't rightly say until after the first of the year. Depends a lot on how long this good weather lasts. Well, perhaps Tonto can answer that for you, Dad. Well, uh, how about it, Tonto? Well, sure, you tell the boss what kind of weather's ahead, Tonto. <laughs> Me, I'm betting we have a short winter and lots of open weather. Is uh, that the way it looks to you, Kimosabe? If it's an open winter, Dad will keep all of his cow herd and be money ahead in the spring. Yes, but on the other hand, if the weather turns real bad, I ain't likely to have feed enough on hand to winter them all. What? What did you call your friend a moment ago? Uh, Kimosabe. The words are from the Indian dialect and mean trusty scout. Trusty scout, huh? Well, then I reckon we can trust whatever Tono wants to tell us about the weather. Except that he ain't telling us nothing so far. You figure maybe I'm right in predicting an open winter? Uh, no. What do you figure, Tondo? Well, me watch flames in fireplace. Flames leap plenty high. Uh, what do you mean, uh, flames leap high? Well, that sign of much cold weather. Much snow. Tonto thinks maybe plenty bad winter head. <laughs> I guess I can explain why the fire's jumping so high. <laughs> Somebody left the damper wide open. You find damper wide open, Jack? What's well, closed? What's well, closed almost tight? Well, I'll be doggone. Tonto, is there really anything to that, or is it just another Indian superstition? Well, red man believe in sign. Red man not have big warm house in winter. Maybe life depend on whether him read sign life. Tonto means that he wouldn't have made the prediction if he didn't believe it to be accurate, Jeff. Hmm. Maybe I'd better get busy and find out about shipping some stuff to Kansas City. Well, if Tonto's right, we better hunt around and get us a couple of more hands on the payroll, huh, Jeff? Well, that reminds me. I hired a man today in Flat Rock. A fellow by the name of Kramer. A uh, cowboy? Horse wrangler. And believe me, he sure understands horse flesh. He's got a buckskin pony he's been training. It's pretty near as smart as your black mare, Jack. Oh, yeah? In fact, he weren't interested in the job know-how. Then I got to telling him about your horse. And the more I talked, the more interested he got. And then, well, about that time, Janie come walking out of the post office and over to the bus. Now, Dad. And this Kramer gent, he took one look at Janie and swallowed his Adam's apple three or four times. <laughs> Don't you believe a word of it, and Jack. Right away, I had myself a new hired man. He's coming out in the morning. <laughs> well, I'll look around and see if I can find another puncher someplace. Uh, this uh, Kramer fellow be rather heavy set. Sort of reddish hair and about the size of Tonto. Well, uh, yeah, sure. You know him? <laughs> if Bud Kramer's coming to work here tomorrow, I think you can stop worrying about the other cowboy. Huh? In about two days, you'll have another man on the payroll. A fellow named Pokey Langley. But, uh, I don't savvy. <laughs> I'll tell you a story about Kramer and Langley. But you'll have to promise not to repeat it because I wouldn't want to spoil their fun. Oh, my oh. goodness. This sounds awfully mysterious. Yes, go ahead. I don't know. I've run across Langley and Kramer up in the North Country several times. They're inseparable partners. <laughs> that's right. And wherever they go, they always manage to stir up considerable excitement. Hey, you don't mean that they're troublemakers, do you? Well, let's say they're practical jokers, Jeff. With a special delight in tormenting lawmen. Uh, just how do you mean? Well, they always come into a strange town separately. The first one to arrive usually hangs around town a day or two until most of the townspeople know who he is. Then the other one comes riding into town and wants to know if anyone has seen or heard of his double-crossing partner. Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh ho there, ho. Oh. Hey, mister. Yeah? What can I do for you, stranger? My name's Pokey Langley. And I'm looking for a no-good double-crossing maverick by the name of Bud Kramer. Kramer? Say, what are you... Aha. Uh-huh. I see you've heard of that Pison sidewinder. Tell me, is he here in your fair city? Why, well, you see, uh, Mr. Langley, Just I... answer me yes or no, partner. I've been riding more than a thousand miles to catch up with that worthless critter. Well, he was here, but uh, uh-huh. I said... Aha. Uh-huh. Is he still here? Well, is he? Well, I, I think so, uh, but I ain't rightly sure. I'm going into this here hotel and scrape off the trail dust I've been accumulating then I'm going to find Bud Kramer and shoot him so full of holes the wind will whistle going through his miserable carcass. To think I finally caught up with a black-hearted scoundrel after all these years. Good heavens. Mr. Langley certainly sounds like an awfully ferocious man. <laughs> you should see the two of them when they meet, Miss Cheney. Uh, you mean them two actually do get together and slug it oh, out? Oh, and very convincingly. 
After Langley arrives and makes a lot of hype talk about Kramer, Kramer starts calling Langley a lot of names and promises to kill him the minute he lays eyes on him. So that weasel-faced bastard accuses me of running away from him, eh? Well, let me tell you, folks, it's just the other way around. I've been looking for that double-crossing pokey Langley for five years. And you can take my word for it. The minute I set eyes on that two-time and tin horn, the lead's going to fly high, wide, and handsome. Why, that miserable no-account horse thief, he's got a streak of yellow running up his back a mile wide. Girl, lie up by the clock, Lord Kramer. Hey, what you well, say? as I live and breathe, it's pokey Langley. You ain't going to live and breathe very long, you dirty double-crosser. Now, you folks get back out of the way I don't want to see innocent people get hurt in account of this worthless bomb. Get out of my way! Look, and hold the chair! Well, Pokey, you can drag your hardware whenever you're ready. Uh-uh. You first, bud. I ain't going to be accused of murder. You know blame well I'm fast and you are with a gun. <laughs> Only thing you're fast with is your mouth, you chief crook. And hey, look yonder, behind the bar. Huh? See that clock? It's almost set to strike the half hour. Sure. Sure, we'll take that for a signal. Right. So long, Pokey. I hate to do this. You better be sorry for yourself, you poor cat. Look at that clock. It's going to strike any second. Never mind the clock, Slim. Keep your head down. Kill Empty the guns. So somebody get the sheriff. The sheriff? You fellas don't need no sheriff. They need the undertaker. I know they was a pair of killers the minute I first laid eyes on them. <laughs> a Kramer and Langley fella. Them think that pretty funny joke. You mean them two <laughs> Ranahans went to all that hullabaloo just for a joke? <laughs> that's right. Well, what happened when the sheriff got there? Or the undertaker? Well, they'd arrive at the scene of the shooting to find Langley and Kramer slapping each other on the back and laughing their sides <laughs> off. <laughs> Everybody in the place scared out of their wits, huh? Kramer and Langley never bothered to explain that they do their shooting at each other with blank cartridges. With <laughs> <laughs> blank cartridges? Oh, oh, oh. Well, of all the loco stunts I ever heard of, that sure is the worst. <laughs> well, I guess we can stand another log on the fire. <laughs> So you figure if Kramer shows up here tomorrow, the other fellow, Langley, will be along asking for a job in a day or two, huh? Yes, I think you can depend on it. <laughs> the mask rider and his Indian friend were gone when the ranch house came to life the next morning. After breakfast, Jeff Morris and his daughter, Jenny, joined a group of cowboys in the ranch yard to watch young Jack Page as he put the black mare lady through her paces. That mare is just the smartest piece of horse flesh I've ever seen in my life. And the handsomest, huh, Dad? Well, now, uh, who are you talking about? The horse or Jack Page? <laughs> well, they're both very handsome, if you must know. Oh, a fella's looks don't mean nothing, Janie. <laughs> but I'll sure take my hat off to a fella that can handle a horse the way Jack handles that mare. Look, he's teaching her a new trick. Oh, uh uh-huh. He's teaching her to come. Sometimes she behaves beautifully, and other times she's awfully stubborn. A genuine female characteristic. Oh, you. <laughs> oh, looks like we got company coming. Hmm? Oh, it's that Kramer gent. Uh, Jack, come here a minute. Huh? Oh, uh, what do you want, Jack? Uh, here comes young Kramer. Now, we ain't supposed to let on like we know about him and his partner, Langley. Savvy? <laughs> Don't worry, I'll keep mum about it. And you too, Janie. Oh, I wouldn't spoil their fun for the world. <laughs> Besides, I'd like to see Sheriff Dixon get all excited when the shooting starts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hold it now. Uh, howdy, Kramer. Oh, hold on. Oh, oh, easy. Uh, howdy, folks. Uh, oh. This is Bud Kramer, the new wrangler I hired in town yesterday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh there, lady. What's the matter with you? Well, it's quite a mare you got there, mister. There ain't none better, Chris. Hold, girl, hold, steady there. What in the world has come over? Hold now, hold now, cut out that prancing around. Act's kind of nervous. Um, uh, what'd you call her? Her uh, name's Lady. Hold, girl, now, easy there, easy. Uh, oh, easy. Looks downright intelligent. Easy. Hello, lady. <laughs> well, now, look at that, would you? What's the matter, girl? Hmm? I'll be darned. Anybody would think they was holding a regular conversation. Didn't I tell you this fella knowed how to handle horses? <laughs> I'll bet you're a pretty good trick horse, huh, lady? What? Look. She's nodding her head. How in the world do you do it? 
I reckon it calls for a heap of patience, Miss Janey. Jack's been trying to teach you to count. Oh, shucks. That ain't nothing much for a smart horse to do. Our lady here. Let me see your teeth, lady. Mm-hmm. About a five-year-old, huh? Yeah, that's right. Lady is five. I suppose you can show me how to make her count up to five, huh? I'll bet you a hundred dollars against the mayor. She'll do it the first try, mister. Feel like gambling? The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. To continue our story, Jack Page stared for a long moment at the smiling cowboy standing before him. Then, I'll bet you the hundred dollars, Kramer. But the mayor had mine to gamble with. No, I understood it was your horse. I'm, uh, I'm aiming to, to, to give the mayor away. Maybe Jeff wouldn't mind breaking the news. <clears throat> well, uh, what Jack is trying to tell you fellas is that him and Janie is fixing to get married. Uh, yeah. Jada becomes the new owner of the Black Mare on her wedding day. I think Lady will be the nicest wedding present any girl ever had. Well, Mr. Kramer, are you going to show us how to make Lady perform? I... Some other time. Right now, I'd better get my gear over to the bunkhouse. Oh, kind of a loudmouth, Jasper, ain't he? <laughs> Makes a lot of big talk and then just walks away. I... I wonder. Yeah? I wonder if it was. Just a lot of loudmouth talk. Well, he sure changed his mind in a hurry. Went, hey, look yonder. Why, yeah, Dixon, the sheriff. He's coming like he was late for breakfast. Now, say, if he's coming for the reason I'm thinking of, don't need the one you let on what the masked man told us, you hear? Well, I'll put the mayor in the stable, and I'll join you later. Uh, Slim, Slim, yeah. can you go over to the bunkhouse and tell Kramer I want to see him? Sure, Jack. Whoa there, whoa, boy. Whoa there, whoa. Well, howdy, sheriff. What's the big rush? Howdy, Jeff. Hello, Janie. Hello, Sheriff. Say, you take on a new man named Kramer? Why, uh, uh, yeah. Well, listen, you got to get rid of him right away. Huh? Why, what's wrong? What's he done? I don't know. But there's a fellow pulled into Flat Rock this morning looking for this Kramer gent. And he sure got blood in his eye. Oh, I wonder why. Do you mean he's gunning for Bud Kramer? He sure is. And I don't aim to let him come together if I can prevent it. Why, this fellow, this uh, pokey Langley, he come roaring into town looking for Kramer... And I declare I never seen a man more anxious for a killing party in all my life. While Sheriff Dixon told the secretly amused rancher and his daughter about the arrival in town of Pokey Langley, Jack Page, the foreman, slipped quietly away from the rear of the stables and approached the corner of the long, rambling bunkhouse. Hey, Kramer. Yeah? Page wants you to come over to the stables. Right. Be there in two shakes. A moment later, Jack Page stepped quietly through the doorway of the deserted bunkhouse and went quickly to the blanket roll that belonged to Bud Kramer. Uh, maybe just a footloose cowboy, and then again, maybe not. But just in case, won't do no harm to find out in advance. <coughs> oh, nothing very unusual here. Hey, what's... Uh, get this bedroll made up like it was and get out of here. So, our fun-loving friend likes to torment the lawman, huh? That's what the mass man said. But the mass man didn't bother to say just why Bud Kramer carries the United States Marshal badge in his bedroll and a murder warrant for Jack Page. It was 
afternoon when the Lone Ranger met his friend Tonto at their new campsite. Quickly, the Indian related what had happened. Plenty big excitement in town, Kimasabi. Langley feller get there this morning, make much fight talk about Bud Kramer. Well, we expected that, didn't we? Ah, but you not savvy about Page feller, Kimasabi. Page? You mean the foreman at Morris' ranch? That's right. What about him, Tonto? Well, me find out about Bud Kramer. Him not just wandering cowboy, him U.S. Marshal with murder warrant for Jack Page. How did you learn this, Tonto? Well, a little while ago, Tonto meet Pokey Langley, him on way to ranch to see friend when someone tried to rob him. But, uh, well, uh, what happened? Well, Langley feller, him riding along trail when someone throw rope and knock him from saddle, him get knocked out. And then? And Bush feller, run away plenty fast when Tonto come along. Him not have time to rob Langley. Did you get a good look at the man who attacked Langley? Well, him plenty far away. But Tonto see Black Horse, and it run plenty fast. You think the man was Jack Page? Ah. Uh, then Langley feller come too. Him say Bud Kramer have murder warrant for Page from Montana. But it doesn't make sense. If Kramer were after Page, why would Page attack Pokey Langley? I... Wait. What matter? Makes plenty of sense. Come on, Toto. We're heading back for the Morris Ranch as fast as we can. Be ready. Come, Scout. Here, Silver. What do you think happened at Ranch Kimasabi? There'll be another murder committed unless we get there in time to stop it. And we'll be responsible for it, Steady Silver. Uh, Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. When Pokey Langley arrived at the wagon wheel for the make believe gunfight with his friend Bud Kramer, it wasn't hard for him to pretend to be in a furious temper. Ho, 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 fella. Ho. I'm looking for a no-good critter known as Bud Kramer. He told me in town I'd find him out here. Well, is he here or ain't he? Just like the sneaking critter to be hiding someplace out of sight. What, what are you laughing about, young lady? Oh, you must be Mr. Langley. Well, how come you to know my name? Oh, Mr. Kramer told me about you. Oh, he did, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, just where can I find that poison sidewinder? Oh, I reckon he ain't far away, fella. Last time I seen him, he was oiling his guns and saying how anxious he was to meet up with you. <laughs> he probably stole your fastest horse and lit out when he heard I was heading this way. Why, Why you if I had a... Oh, my goodness, such an awful name. Oh, there you are, Bud Kramer. At last I've caught up with you. You ain't caught up with nothing but the undertaker, you puffed up windbag. Whenever you're ready, you can stop shooting off your face and try shooting that six gun you're packing. You folks stand back out of the way. I don't aim to see innocent people get hurt while I exterminate this double-crossing vomit. What? I'm going to count to three, partner. You better be ready to grab your gun. Start counting, you black-hearted weasel. Hey, look. Look, there's a couple of riders coming. Come on, Let them come, one. I'd sure like to know what that young lady's laughing about. She's laughing to think how you're going to look when I get through with you. Two. Well, hurry up and get the three. Oh, silver, oh, three. 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 Hey, hey, what's the idea? Spoiling everything. Say, hey, did you see that? The masked man shot the gun out of Pokey's hand. Oh, gone at all. You sure put the kibosh in a good shooting party, masked man. Sorry, bud. Pokey, pick up your gun. Take a look at the cartridges. Huh? What are you getting at, anyway? Look at your gun. Oh, sure. Hey. What is it, partner? Well, well bud, I'd have killed you dead in a doornail if the masked man hadn't have got here when he did. Look. Well, for the love of... What's the idea of putting real bullets in that gun? But it didn't. I put blanks in before I left town. Now you know why you were attacked and knocked unconscious on your way out here, Pokey. What's that you say? Sorry to give you bad news, Jeff, but Bud Kramer here happens to be a United States Marshal with a murder warrant for Jack Page. Oh, no. No, that can't be true. I, I don't know how to tell you how sorry I am, Miss Janie. Let me tell you how glad I am that Jack's plan to murder you failed. I suppose it was Jack who attacked Pokey Langley and substituted the real bullets for the blanks. Yes, Miss Jenny. Tonto saw him riding away on the black mare. The black mare? My wedding present. Come on. Let's get saddled up and go after him. Tonto and I'll ride with the marshal and his friend, Jeff. You better take your men and go after your cattle. Uh, All right. And a big storm coming, the big fella. Well, let's go. You got a three hour start on us already. Come on, Pokey. I'm ready and wait. Get up. Come on. Get him up, small silver. <laughs> Throughout the afternoon, Jack Page headed the black mare into the upland country. A dozen miles ahead lay the entrance to Pocono Pass and Freedom. Get up there. Get up over. Get along there. The man get shivered up. as the icy wind ripped through his mackinaw. 
He glanced anxiously at the heavy gray clouds overhead. And then, as though the heavens had opened, the snowflakes fell, gently at first. Then, as the wind rose steadily in volume, the countryside was blotted out with the fury of the storm. Within an hour, the man knew he was hopelessly lost. Desperately, he pulled the heavy six-gun from under his Mackinac and began firing. Firing and reloading with numb fingers. Listen up ahead. Wasting a pile of ammunition. This way! Over here! Hey, help, help. There he is! Ah! In time, find shelter on the cliff! Come on, let's get his guns and ammunition! You go back to Rand tonight, Kimasami? No, Toto. We got a fire going under that cliff and wait for daylight. You there, Paige! Put up your hands! There's your killer, Marshal! <laughs> mid-morning when the party returned to the wagon wheel with their prisoner. As they rode into the ranch yard, Jeff Morris and his daughter came out to greet them. Oh, 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 easy, big fellow. Oh, golly, Tonto, you sure did call the weather. Did you get your cattle out in time? Yes, sir, and just in time. Well, Jack, I see they brought you back. And they don't mind saying I'm sorry for you. And you, Zaney. You sorry for me, too? I... Of course I am. But I'm glad, in a way. Well, Glad. Glad that Bud Kramer and his friend and the Lone Ranger and Tonto found you and brought you back. I guess they got panicky. Probably would have died if they hadn't found me last night. I want... Janie, I want you to keep the mare for your own. No. No, Jack, I, I wanted to own Lady One. As a wedding present, remember? Uh, just a minute. That mare ain't yours to give, Mr. Page. So climb off. What's that you're saying, Kramer? The mare was stolen from me up in Montana over a year ago. And Paige killed a fella in a gunfight. Took the mare and headed south. Oh, that's a lie. Well, the horse ain't even branded. How can you prove anything? I wanted to show you once that I knew how to handle this lady horse better than you could. And I found out Miss Janey was getting the mare for a wedding present. I changed my mind then. Now I reckon I can change it again. What do you mean? I just want to show you one trick you never knew that a horse could do. Lady... <laughs> Buck, lady. Buck. Turn it loose, lady. Stop it. Just cut it out. Take your stuff and cut it out. Now, that's what I call getting unloaded in a hurry. <laughs> oh, excuse me for laughing, but it was funny. Jeff, can you lend me a horse to take this fellow to town? Sure, you bet, Marshal. Hey, you worries, keep that bunkhouse door shut. Uh, Janie. Yes, bud? I, uh, I don't think it'll stay in this law business much longer. Thought maybe I'd get me a little place close by and um, <clears throat> settle down, maybe. Oh, but that would be very nice. Uh, yeah. Uh, meanwhile, would you mind keeping the mare here for me? Oh, I'd love to. Uh, can't ever tell when I might want to give somebody a, well, say, a, a wedding present, for instance. Never can tell. And silver,
The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah. Oh. Sorry, we were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Forward, prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.